Alright, right, welcome back to my very irregular new show. The last one was like six months ago. Roll the intro. So a while ago, Unity released their own inference engine called Barracuda and thus remove the dependency of TensorFlow Sharp with their ML agent package. This allows us to run machine learning models in Onyx format with cross-platform support. So what does this mean for AR and VR? Well, not that much, unless you're Kajero. I follow one person on GitHub, and it's this man. He's an absolute monster. He does not eat or sleep, he just codes. He's got a bunch of models running like background removal, face mesh, and even hand tracking. His pre-processing is done with compute shaders, which gives us hope for mobile performance. On a similar note, if you've ever made an AR app in Unity before, you've probably come across NatCam, NatMic, or NatCorder at some point for screen recording. According to my friend Ilter on Twitter, the Nat Suite is coming out with NatML. So this is basically the AR foundation of machine learning for Unity. They have full support for Onyx models, and this is really exciting for running ML models in Unity with hardware acceleration. They have NatML Hub, which also has some models ready to go, and they even have this line segment detector model, which I've really not seen anything quite like it before. So obviously Snap and Facebook and some other big AR companies have had these types of capabilities for quite a while now. But if you've ever tried to implement this kind of stuff outside of these walled gardens, you know it's borderline impossible without a team of interdisciplinary engineers to get good cross-platform performance on mobile. Now, moving on to Oculus, they finally released the Pass-Through API Experimental. This drawing demo was going around on Twitter for a while. You would think this is super exciting, but they state apps that use Pass-Through API cannot access, view, or store images or videos of your physical environment. Now, I haven't used this personally, but it would seem that from that statement, you cannot access the camera feed to do any computer vision on your own. Either way, I'm really excited to see what type of mixed reality stuff comes out of this with the blending of AR and VR. We've really not had a device that could do this without modification at least, because it requires a large field of view to transition from AR to VR effectively and to seamlessly blend the two together. Meaning a pass-through AR device would be best suited for this. So if the next quest comes with the color camera, this stuff could get pretty crazy pretty quickly. And for that, I'm excited. In the wearable space, we got some new tech. I was lucky enough to be in the first creator program for the next-gen Snap Spectacles. It was a really good experience, they treat their creators super well, and they make you feel really special. On the shoot day, there was like a 20-person professional film crew inside my house, and they even approved me taking the film crew to the skate park, which was crazy to me. The glasses themselves are surprisingly small and light. The field of view inside the glasses is small, but the output of the screen recording is huge. It takes like five seconds to get a lens from your computer to the glasses, which is amazing. You can apply on their website to get a pair of these for yourself. If you haven't learned Lens Studio yet, this would be a great time to learn. The workflow is similar enough to Unity that it's not very hard to learn, and it was designed specifically for making AR experiences, which makes it super seamless for developing. I put off learning Lens Studio for a long time, honestly because I thought it was lame, but the reality is that they keep putting out amazing features and they're really just taking over the space. Now, I don't have any insider information on this one, but Snap is still rumored to be working on an AR drone, so just another reason to get your Lens Studio skills going before that happens. Now, Google released the Glass Enterprise 2. From my perspective, these kind of flew under the radar and I really didn't hear much about them, but I was able to get a pair through my work. While these aren't immersive AR glasses, they do offer some real-world utility. If you don't know anything about these, they display a tiny screen at the top right of your field of view. So actually right now, I'm using Google Glass to read the script while still looking at the camera. So this is exactly what I'm seeing. They're extremely light and they have up to 8 hours of battery life on a full charge. And they run on Android API level 27. I did a longer video on these on my works channel, but the coolest part to me is the glasses come with a WebRTC video calling demo. This is extremely useful for people working out in the field that need remote hands-free instructions. If you look at something like Euphoria Chop that uses AR to overlay instructions to a user, it starts to feel like overkill. Google Glass shows you that, in reality, having a small video screen and good audio is all you need for remote instructions or training purposes. So yeah, that's it. That's all I got for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and this new format wasn't too annoying. Alright, welcome back to my very irregular new show. The last one was Okay, so here's the thing. I really wanted you guys to be able to try this in VR, but I, I ran into a bunch of problems. First of all, Unity's video player does not play multiple videos on the Quest. Not a huge surprise. So I tried the video player from Oculus, which uses ExoPlayer on Android. I had to modify the plugin a little bit, but I eventually got that playing multiple videos, and that was cool. But it uses the OVR overlay, so I could not get those textures into my shaders. 
I found an ExoPlayer plugin on the Asset Store, but it does not support multi-threaded rendering. Long story short, I spent a few weeks making my own ExoPlayer plugin with Unity's native render plugin that passes texture pointers through the native layer to Java, which ended up working really well, and I had multiple videos playing with multi-threaded rendering, and life was good. The only problem is that my plugin uses Create External Texture and a shader that uses Sampler External OES in GLSL. So this completely breaks when I switch my project to the Universal Render Pipeline, which this project heavily relies on. So if anyone knows how to fix that, I would be forever in your debt. I put the plugin on my GitHub and there's another branch with my pathetic attempt to support URP. Anyway, my only real option at this point is to try to put this on Steam, which I really don't want to do. And there's also an $800 plugin on the asset store that looks like it could work, but I really don't want to buy that either. I was really hoping to get this up because I wanted to create a little editor for you guys so you could make your own videos inside this world. This project is structured such that each video is a JSON file that contains animations that play at certain times with links to the media that goes along with it. So I was hoping to make a little WebGL editor or something where you could just like drag animations onto a timeline and then add your own media. I even made this Python process that converts regular video to green screen video so you could just film yourself with a regular phone and then the VR app would turn you into a hologram. So yeah, if somebody could help me with this video plugin, that would be amazing. But uh, yeah, that's all I got for today. So we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.